Number 158 says, a committee is comprised of W women and M men. So W is a variable uh, for the number of women, and M is a variable for the number of men. If three women and two men are added to the committee, so we're going to add three women, we're going to add two men, uh, and one person is assigned is selected at random from the enlarged committee, and the probability that a woman is selected can be represented by, oh, so this is a probability question. Um, it, probability. I think we've, uh, we've, we've talked about this in a previous Quest, uh, in a previous problem, but the way that you figure out probability is uh, you're going to look for the number of uh, possibilities, so total possibilities, over the number of uh, what we want. So to uh, what we want over whatever is uh, the total number of possibilities. In this case, we're picking people, right, out of this group of, uh, out of this group that we don't really know how big the group is. We just know that there's W women plus three and M men plus two. Anyway, what are the num? What's the number of possibilities total? And what is the number that we're actually looking for? We're looking for the number of women, right? We're looking for the probability that a woman is selected. So, um, the numerator is going to be W for the number of women. Plus, we know that we added three, so whatever that original number was, plus three. That's going to be the numerator. That's the, the, the chance that we are going to pick a woman. Out of all the possible people that we can pick, which is going to be both women and men, and all the people that we just added. So W plus M plus three plus two. And you add those together, and you get W plus three over W plus M plus five. And that is one of the answer choices. That is going to be answer E. On to 159. How many prime factors between 1 and 100 are factors, are, well, not prime numbers, there's prime factors. How many prime numbers between 1 and 100 are factors of 7,150? Well, let's factor this out and count up the number of prime numbers that are factors. So uh, let's divide by 5 first, since that's a nice pr uh, prime number. We have our first prime number. 5 goes into 7 1 times uh, 4 for 20, and then 3 and 0. OK, let's go by 5 again. 286, let's divide by 2. 143. Okay, so when you get to 143, it's very hard to actually figure out what what is a factor of 143. But a trick that I like to use is um, whenever you see two a three-digit number where the number on the left and the number on the right add together to create the number in the middle, you know that it's divisible by 11. And in this case, it's going to be 11 and 13 because if you were to actually take 13 and multiply it and add another 13, you get 143. And that's true of any kind of number. So um, if it was 12 times 11, for example, the answer would be 132 because this is the number that stays on the left, this is the number that goes on the right, and the middle is going to be the number when you add the two of them up. So um, anyway, using that little shortcut, we know that uh, 11 and 13 are also going to be uh, factors that are prime. So let's count up all the different factors. 5, 2, 11, and 13. That uh, means that there are four factors, and that is answer D. 160. 160 says the figure above shows a circular flower bed. Okay, so I'm going to draw a circle. Okay, that was a fail. Let me try this again. Ah, uh, good enough. Okay, so there's this circle that looks kind of like... Man, I'm really bad at drawing circles. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there's this circular-looking thing, right? And uh, on the on the actual image, it's it's shaded. So I'll shade a little bit of it so you get an idea. Anyway, um, and uh, there's the center of the circle. 
and they tell us that this right here is eight feet. It says the uh, with its center at zero. Okay, so this is O, um, surrounded by a circular path that is three feet wide. So this path is three feet. Man, this is a really badly drawn circle. Sorry, guys, my uh, artistic skills are not what they used to be. Um, I know. I draw a little tree here. Okay, now it's a very organic looking path with a few rocks. There we go. Okay, so this path here, uh, they say it's three feet wide. And now you have to imagine that this is a, an actual uh, perfect circle. So they are wondering what is the area of this path in square feet. And what we're going to actually be doing is taking the area of the entire circle and subtracting it by the area of this inner part, right? Because th then we'll, we'll, we'll be left with the area of uh, just the shaded region. So area of uh, entire circle, subtract um, area of center. So what's the area of the entire circle? Well, the area formula, you know that area equals uh, pi r squared, right, where r is the radius. So the radius of this entire thing is going to be 8 plus 3, because it's the radius of the inner circle plus the, the width of, uh, of the path. So that's going to be 11, right? So a equals pi uh, times 11 squared. And 11 times 11 is going to be 121, based on that uh, little shortcut that I mentioned in the last problem. You add the two uh, numbers up, and that becomes a middle number. So we know that the area of the entire thing is going to be 101 or 121 pi. Now we have to find the area of the inner circle. And we, they already gave us that uh, the radius is, is 8 feet. So we know that a equals uh, 8 times 8 is going to be 64, 64 pi. So now we just take 121 pi, we subtract 64 pi, and are we, what are we left with? Uh, 57 pi. And 57 pi is going to be uh, answer D. Moving on to 161, which says the positive integer n is divisible by 25. If square root of n is greater than 25, which of the following could be n over 25? And they give us a, b, c, d, e, and 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Whenever they give you this many, um, these many numbers close, so close together, um, you know that there must be some trick where you can very quickly eliminate a whole lot of them, a whole lot of these answer choices. So what can we do here? Well, there's not much we can do, but uh, one thing that we could do is, is take the square of both sides. So we have n is greater than 25 squared, right? Now we are going to be looking for a possibility, like which one of these could actually be n over 25. So n over 25 would have to be greater than 25 squared over 25, right? Because n is greater than 25 squared. So if n were smaller, then it wouldn't, it would make this false. So we know this has to be true. Now, 25 is going to be 20, 25 squared is 25 times 25. So we can actually um, cancel out and get n over 25 is greater than 25. Which one of these answer choices is greater than 25? Ah, E. And that's how we solve 161. 162 is a. Uh, Oh, okay. A, a fruit salad mixture contains apples, peaches, and grapes in the ratio 6, 5, 2. Already, I know that this is going to be a problem where we have to find the multiplier. Um, and then they gave us that uh, there are 39 pounds prepared. And so the mixture includes how many more pounds of apples uh, than grapes? So apples minus grapes equals our answer. They gave us 39 pounds, right? 
So 6x plus 5x plus 2x equals 39. 13x equals 39. x equals 3. So apples is going to be 6x, right? So 6 times 3 is 18. Minus grapes is 2 times 3, 6. And that gets us our answer, 12. And 12 is answer B. One sixty-three. This year, Henry will save a certain amount of his income, and he will spend the rest. So, this year, this year, Henry is going to save a certain amount, and then he will spend the rest. So, um, total equals uh, save plus plus rest. So, S plus R. R for the rest. So, S equals uh, equals save. R equals uh, spent the rest. Okay, so total equals S plus R. Then they tell us next year Henry will have no income, but for each dollar that he saves this year, he will have one plus R dollars available to spend. So uh, each dollar saved equals one plus R next year. And in terms of R, what fraction of his income, of this income, should Henry save this year so that next year the amount he has available to spend will be equal to half the amount that he spends this year? So ultimately what we're looking for is a fraction of his income uh, that he should save. So we're looking for S over S plus R. That's the fraction we're going to be looking for. But they have the stipulation that he, you have to save enough so that the so that the next year the amount that he has available to spend will be equal to half the amount he spends this year so half half of r has to equal uh the amount that he has available to spend which is going to be one plus r right for each dollar saved so however much he saves that is going to be multiplied by one plus r Let's figure this out. What, what would be the easiest way to, to plug this into this? Well, we've got to get rid of the S because they, they told us to find the answer in terms of Y, right? In terms of Y. So, hmm, let me think. Well, we could if we write this as R over 2 equals S times 1 plus R, and then just, actually, we can cross multiply this way. So we get X, R equals hmm what's the best way to do this r equals 2s plus 2sr okay let's try this out now we have r let's plug it into this equation we get s over s plus 2s plus 2sr and let's factor out the well no let's add these together to get 3s plus 2sr okay and now let's factor out the s and we get s over s times 3 plus 2r cancel out the s's and we get 1 over 3 plus 2r is that one of the answer choices 1 over well answer choice e says 1 over 2r plus 3, which is the same thing. So uh, it, the answer is going to be E. Man, 163 is a very tricky problem, and the hardest part about it is you have to read this story and be able to assign variables and keep track of the variables. So it's always a good idea to, to write out your variables at the very beginning because R could S could be confused for spend, and you know R could mean a lot of other things. So just make sure that you define your variables so that you don't get confused partway through the through the uh, through the problem. And then uh, you should be fine. All right, check me out in the next video.